The altar won't budge. There simply has to be some kind of mechanism that operates it. A hidden switch. Perhaps it has something to do with opening that hatch. A switch much like the first. Could there be more? Three down, but how many to go? What was that? I heard the sound of scraping in the main hall. Strange magic here. How will we deactivate it? That cultist must have used some kind of key or spell to get through. The immaculate amulet fits perfectly what inside. Done. Malia. Precious Malia. I'm a fool. Please. Source Hunter. Huh. By the health of the Seven, you're here. There may yet be hope. Perhaps you remember me as a healer. But gods, what a herald of death I have become. I'm beyond redemption now. But you, you alone may save Sicil, may save all of Rivalon from the horror I've summoned. King Bracchus, Bracchus Rex from the tales of old, he lives. The mad source king, the lord of chaos, I have awakened him. I've done a terrible thing. I've raised a mad king from beyond the grave. I imagined so very foolishly that I'd be able to extract an ancient secret from him. But with a simple flash of his arcane magic, I was... I was finished. I'll tell you all I know, Source Hunter. Bracchus was a dangerous monster, but he achieved things no man or mortal could have dreamt of. He alone is said to have known a great secret, how to break the Forge of Souls. I promise to extract this secret for a woman calling herself the Conduit. In exchange, she vowed to reveal to me a certain power of her own. In hindsight, I see that I dealt with the devil, and I've received my damnation. I was given a great stone, a bloodstone, but more charged with life than any I'd seen before. The conduit said it would imbue Bracchus with life enough to share the secret she craved. But what he has become? His powers have all returned, and I cannot stop him. The last of the mad Source King's heroes, and the tyrant who nearly condemned Rivalon to oblivion. He began the War of Wars, marching brother against brother against friend, until every land and home burned with death. It was during this, this dark time that your order, the Source Hunters, was formed. Bracchus was defeated, and Source outlawed from the land. Resurrected, revived. The king lives, but not as the man he once was. He retains the mark of death upon him, like a festering wound. My failures. My failures are so many. I can hide them no longer. In my pursuit of the Source King, I've called forth abominations that neither I nor 
any other can destroy. The ghoul that guards the lighthouse, the Baron of Bones, the twins by fire joined. Their ghastly faces haunt me, and they in turn have rifled through the graves and sarcophagi of Sicil in search of undead minions. Undead, Source Hunter, unkillable. I fear this plague may never end, no matter how many times the rotten dead are defeated. Curse her name, her hell-sent promises. She claims to be a link between her goddess and the world of men. I never believed her divine claims, but I could not deny her great power. It was she who showed me that bloodstone could be used for more than healing. Her stones, particularly powerful and potent, could raise the dead. What could turn any soft soul towards wickedness? My weakness was love, and it was love that she promised me. The conduit had shown me how to raise skeletons and zombies from their graves. But what I craved was something far more rare. A second life. A true second life for my wife, Malia. She was a beautiful soul, snatched from the world of the living far before her time. How the conduit's promise seemed simple. A secret for a secret. I'd tell her how to break the soul forge, and she'd tell me how to bring Malia back. You can defeat the unholiness I've raised, Source Hunter. You can save the countless innocents that will perish under the Source King's mad fist. I pray... No, I believe you can reverse my failures. So Theleron believed that by unleashing these monsters, he'd learn the secret to resurrecting his beloved wife. Love so complete can cloud even the best man's judgment. Love is no excuse for committing an act so very dire. Try to stop my dominion again. <laughs> oh, by the emerald eyes of the goddess, would you believe that I can still feel it ever so vaguely? The force of the stab that cleft my heart and sent my soul shivering into death. But my followers have done it. <laughs> they have done it like I knew. Blood, the thick red gravy, the source of souls, has been yielded unto star sent stones and has swept away the eternal shadows. How long has it been, I wonder, my first repose in death? An hour, the time it takes the seas to tear down cliffs, 
It is of no matter. I live, and I shall claim my throne anew. Ha, not a thing. There was a woman once that went by that name, until I mangled her body into that of a leaf. Oh, my sister dearest, Cassandra, and her man-cat. Mere pets of mine, the both of them, tools to bruise and break as I saw fit. They bled so very beautifully. The reason for my resurrection, O simplest of spirits, is that I was destined to be, were it not for the vainglorious fools that raised me now. It would have been another, perhaps wiser being, that would have done so in time. And time is of no matter. Only to be eternally. A woman seeks my secret, for her soul is entwined with another's. Yet, where once they were inseparable, now they have grown apart in purpose and intent. But my secrets are mine to keep. Perhaps when she lies shivering before me, Pledging alliance to her king, I will break her forge before I break her. A fable I may have become as time dragged on, but a fact I am once more, little one. Don't you, don't all of you miserable mortals realize that they who are one with sword have thrown off the burdensome mantle of death forever. I embraced sores. I drank it, made it part of my blood and my being. And so a warlord became a sorcerer, and a sorcerer became a king. The fools of this world dubbed me a tyrant, but the gods convinced them I was such, fearful as they were of my rise and power. Armies are massed, too many. Scores I slew, too few. Death took me, too soon, but not for all time. <sighs> A source hunter. So you are, though you are so much more, and do not even they still smell like you do, by the by, your brother and sister hunters, as they closed in around me that first time. Fear. That most sly, most intangible of scents. Drowned out soon afterward by the acid stench of urine. <laughs> I had but to look at them, and they rusted their chain mail where they stood. I undid so manifold they had to wade through the gore of the fallen. Oh, what a feast, what fountains of gravy we had. Alas, that there were too many, as there clearly are too many of you still. Although, life renewed has made me rather peckish. And from the looks of you, you need but the slightest of squeezes to make squirt the source's source from your soft, fleshy shell. Yes, look at you, plump as a leech bulging with freshly sucked blood. Oh, I do believe, as my servants would say as they brought in a squirming, plump girl on a plate, that dinner is served. Uh, my horrors, stand by your and grave. Take me to the tomb.
Back on my feet again. Hehehehe <laughs> Darling Arachnid, aid my plight! I needed that. The unending darkness. Sparks, set this soil ablaze!
they were right there. Back to Ark! I can thwart your every move! I needed that.
I will freeze you where you stand. That is the final end of Brachis Rex. May his soul remain in the depths of hell for good. A stitch in time, eh, my friends? Sigurd's beard, what a find! Striking it rich! Source Hunter, is it safe? Have you done it? Please tell me that you have sent Brachis Rex to the grave once and for all. Magnificent. Oh, truly wondrous. I feel like a prisoner set free. Free to bask in the daylight once more. I was so fearful, petrified almost in the knowledge that I might see him again. You see, I knew the Mad King. In fact, I served him. I'm a wizard hunter, and that means I've seen many centuries pass me by. They weren't always happy ones, and you may take that as an understatement. I was once under Brachus's thrall, bound to him by perfidious magic. Life was an endless cycle of servitude, torture, and humiliation. Only after the first source hunter skewered him like the pig he was did my nightmare end. As you can imagine, I was afraid beyond all measure that the fiend would enslave us all once more that I'd be cast back into the rank pit that was my past. But he hasn't, and he never will. Thank you. I will never forget this act of valor. So you have heard of her? Yes. I knew Cassandra. She was a sweet girl when we met. Hardly a woman yet. 
The very opposite of her deranged brother, who did not hesitate to butcher her for his own benefit. We were fast friends in those days. Aye, more than friends. Until he took her down to the dungeons and she returned a woman no longer. A twisted lich had she become, with a twisted mind to match her grisly new shape. He remorselessly and relentlessly sought ways to cheat death. Cassandra and he were soul-forged, so he knew that if she would die, he would die. And so he turned her into a lich. Turned her into a creature neither living nor dead, so that he could break the soul-forge without destroying himself in the process. Giving the matter no further thought, he rid his sister of her humanity, so as to rid himself of a spell that could threaten him. Such a man was Bracchus Rex. Immortal in his mind, and immortal to be in effect. As your swords and spells have demonstrated, though, to this world's everlasting contentment, his deranged fancy was not to be. I... I don't know. When the Source Hunters besieged Braxis's castle, I sought only to escape. I never heard of her again. I... yes. I longed for freedom, for release. When I saw my chance, I ran and never looked back. You have foiled one of Leandra's vile designs, that much is certain. But I highly doubt you forestalled her endgame, whatever that may be. It is therefore imperative that we find her sister Ricara. As you've learned from the accursed duo that was Jake and Evelyn, the White Witch is somehow involved. I will vouch for her gentle nature, but alas, I cannot vouch for her current state of mind. Has she been corrupted by her sister, perhaps? Or have they become enemies locked in a murderous game of cat and mouse? There's no way of knowing until you find her. What I do know is that she lives in a cabin deep in Lakula Forest to the north. If anywhere, that is where I advise your travels should take you next. Very well, Hunter. My gratitude is yours, as is my service. In the rain, nobody can see you cry. Unlimited! Bless the seven, I am restored!
around this land. <laughs> 